Welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. In today's video, I will be creating three inky cards with stenciling and stamping. I have lots of tips for you. I also be using a new product, a new tool that I really think is worth checking out. I will start by showing you the tools, then we will put them to use, and while I'm using them, I will talk about why I think it's important to share new tools like this and why I think it's important that our industry keeps coming out with new things. Then at the end, I will do kind of a summary on my recommendations and so on. So I encourage you to stick with me through this. I think, I'm hoping you'll learn a thing or two. So the new tool that I'm using today is from Waffle Flower and they're called Grip Mats. Now there are different sizes available, quite a few different sizes. I will demonstrate with a few of them today and then I will make my recommendation on which size I think is best and share some little uh, tricks I found along the way to really make the most of this tool. Now these are mats that will hold your paper in place as you do stenciling, inking, stamping, and more. However, as you'll learn later in this video, there are many other uses for them. So these are made from photopolymer. If you've ever used a US made clear stamp, you know that our clear stamps have a little bit of tackiness to it, a little stickiness to it. Well, this is made from a giant piece of that same material, nice and smooth, so it's got natural stick to it. There's no adhesive on this. So this is great for holding paper in place as you do different techniques. So you can see all the different sizes here. I will be demonstrating with a few of them and then at the end talking about really what I would recommend if you want to invest in one of these. You will first see me use one of these for the first time. Then I go off screen, play with them a lot, learn a lot about them, and towards the middle to end of this video, I'll show you lots of things that I've learned and creative ways to use them. Now, if you have a sticky mat already, you can definitely try a lot of the techniques that I'm sharing with you today. I've used a variety of sticky mats in the past, and you'll be able to see how that these compare with other sticky mats as we go. And as I mentioned, while I'm creating, I'm gonna talk a bit about new tools and why I think they're important to our industry. And I know they can be overwhelming, but I'm hoping that I give a little perspective on it, a perspective that I too myself have learned. Now there are a couple of other tools that Waffle Flower uh, released to go along with these mats. One is the stencil extender that you see on the left. I'm not using that today, but that is an additional tool. And then these grip mat guides, there are three guides in there. And you can see that you can place them underneath your clear grip mat to help you line things up. I'll use one of these later in this video. So let's talk a bit about the cards that I will be creating so that I can demonstrate the usefulness of a sticky mat. Now these are great examples for a sticky mat because they involve stenciling and stamping. I'll be using new products from Waffle Flower that I think are really well designed. They create fun postage stamp looks and they're super easy. I'm hoping they come out with more in this line. Now first you have the postage collage die set. It has that large die and the smaller shaped dies. And you'll see me use that large die in today's video in a few different ways. Now there is also the stamp set that allows you to add little postage like images to your card creations. There are three layering stencils available that coordinate with that postage collage die. So the first one is this everyday collage and you'll see that on my third example today. The next one is the postage collage Christmas which you'll see on my first example. And then finally, we have the postage collage coloring stencil set. And this one will be on my second example. So lots of different options here. I'm gonna start by using that large die to cut from white cardstock. This will create that kind of perforated edge look and also faux stitching on the detail on each of those little postage stamps. So you could really mask this off and use any inking and stamping. You don't have to use the stencils. In fact, I plan to go live in a few weeks sharing ideas for that. Here I'm just trying to remove those little dots from the perforated areas. A trick for doing that quickly is to rub a paper piercer right along the back side of the die cut and that pops those dots out quickly. Another option would be to roll a lint roller over it and it will pull out all of those little dots, but I find this trick works really well. 
And by the way, after I pop those dots out, I just brush them onto the floor. That way you can walk through them and you'll have a little trail so everyone knows where you've gone. I do that with stitching dies a lot. All right, now for the grip mat I'm starting out with. This is the first time I've used it. This is the six and a half by eight and a half inch grip mat. The reason Waffle Flower created the size is that it fits inside of a Misty stamping tool, which I'll show you later, but I also find that it's a really good workable size. Now the grip mat comes with the grip mat itself, which is on the right, and then these two alignment guides that you see here. It's helpful to have two of the alignment guides in case you lose one, but also you'll see both are handy when you're using the grip mat. Now there are markings here for a center point, for a horizontal and vertical A2 card, and also a five by seven card. So it really helps with aligning things, which I will also demonstrate. Now there is a carrier sheet on here that is thin. I just remove it from that. Then there is a thicker carrier sheet, which I keep. You can see it's a nice thick piece here that you can store your mat on, but you can also use to help with masking. Again, I'll demonstrate that. Now the grid sheets there are a bit smaller than the mat itself, and there's a reason for that. Now if you want to use this in your Misty stamping tool, what you'll do is take the mat and put it in there upside down. You'll know what the back side is because the back side is slightly bigger than the front side of the mat. So it's got a little angle on the edges there. So I will place it into the stamping tool so the back is facing up towards the camera. Again, that's the side that's just a little bit bigger. And I'll put it right into the corner of the Misty stamping tool. And by the way, I did take the mouse pad out. Now I'll take one of the clear grid mats and I will flip it over. You'll know it's flipped over because the word waffle flower will read backwards. I will line up the green grid on that grid mat with the pink grid inside of my Misty stamping tool. I will then flip that mat over, so I took it out and flipped it over, and place it back in the corner of the Misty tool. So because that grid mat that we stuck to it with the green lines is smaller than the grip mat, those edges on the left and the right will still be sticky and it'll grip into your stamping tool and it'll hold it there. However, you can easily kind of reach up there on the top right corner and take it out when you need to. This is really handy and this is something that I think will make a big difference. So if I want to, I can take it out and I'm putting it on my glass work surface. It'll grip nicely onto a glass work surface. If you do not have a glass work surface, I will talk about what you can do with that later. So again, I have the clear alignment guide stuck to the back of the grip mat, and that area around the green lines over on the right and the bottom of the screen, that is holding it into my Misty stamping tool. You could just put the mat in there without the green alignment guide on the back, but I think that green alignment guide is helpful and you'll see that later. But for now, I'm gonna remove that alignment guide just to show you one of the ways you can use this grip mat. I'm gonna just lay it down onto my glasswork surface. So it's got that natural tackiness or stickiness on both sides. And I'll lay it down onto my glasswork surface. Again, if you don't work on glass, I will share something in a moment, but I really do recommend it. Glass is really easy to work on and great for cleanup. I'll link below to what I use. Now I'm laying my white die cut onto it and it'll hold it there. And then I'll line up the first of the postage Christmas collage stencils on top. And I'll just line it up and press it down. And watch, when you press the stencil onto the grip mat, you can see how it gets a little darker on the stencil. That means it's really suctioned or stuck on there. It will not move as you apply color over this. So you don't have to worry about your stencil shifting. This is really helpful because there are so many stencils in the crafting world right now, and this will hold it tight. Now remember I mentioned that the grip mat comes with the clear carrier sheet that's heavyweight. That's what's in my hand here. Then it also comes with the two clear sheets with the grid on it. Those sheets can be used to mask off because they're going to stay put, right? Because the edges of the grip mat will hold them in place. So they're all stuck on there now too. They won't move as you stencil. No more using little pieces of tape or whatever. So I am applying over this little open area at the top some uh, dye ink here. This is all to new fresh dye ink, the Let Us Celebrate color. It's a beautiful green. 
After I've applied that ink, I can use a dry cloth to wipe it off. And now I've got this clean stenciled area. I can take those carrier sheets, those clear sheets, and move it to the next area. So I'm using those clear sheets that come with the grip mat to do some masking. Now I've shown many ways to do masking in past videos. I'll link to one up here on the top right, but this is really quite easy and would be helpful with doing selective inking on a lot of different stencils. So with these particular stencils, there are, I guess, these six postage stamps that we're inking, and I'm just kind of masking off the different areas to do different colors. You could definitely do the same color over the whole stencil if you want to save time, but you know me, I kind of like to step things up to get even better results. Now I thought it would be helpful to just show you at an angle what this looks like. It's kind of hard to see overhead. So I just shot this really roughly with my iPhone, but you can see how uh, this really suctions on there and holds there as we do our inking. So I will continue to ink up over the stencil each of the different areas of these postage stamps using those clear sheets that come with the grip mat to mask things off. I'll put at the top of the screen the type of inks I'm using and the color. You can use whatever inks you want. I just chose the colors I liked best for each of the areas. You can also use any inking ink blending tools you want. I'll demonstrate with a few others and talk about the, the different types I use a little bit later in this video. So as I continue to ink over this stencil and then switch to another, I wanted to talk to you about new crafty tools that have come out on the market and just some comments I've seen or uh, questions I've gotten. And you'll have to forgive me in advance. I'm not one who's really good with words, so I'm hoping I say it right. If I think of something else, I will put it in my pinned comments below on this YouTube video. But I just wanted to address the idea of companies coming out with new products, such as this new grip mat that I'm using from Waffle Flower. First of all, if you see me use a product in my video, it's because I have tried it and I like it. I will never do a product review video where I say I don't like a product. I just won't use it. The reason is, I don't want to put out a video that says that this pro a certain product isn't very good because I may be using it wrong or it may not be something that works with how I create. So I will never do a video where I say, here's a new product and I don't think it's great. This is just not how I work and not the kind of energy I want to put into this world. Instead, I just will not use that product in videos. Now the downfall of this is that you will only see videos from me sharing great tools, new tools that I love, new tools that I think are really helpful. It's because I'm only sharing things that I have tried and found success with. We all create differently, we all have different needs, and I'm trying to show as many different techniques or products as possible so that you can find what best works for you. I feel like that's important for me to do as a teacher. Now a good example of this is sticky mats, as I'm using today. Years ago, I would buy sticky mats on Amazon and cut them down to fit inside of my Misty stamping tool. Then a company came out with a sticky mat that fit inside of this, the Misty, so I didn't have to cut it down. It made it easy for everyone, and I was really excited about that. I still use that tool till this day. Then other things have come out since then. There are many different ways uh, craft companies have approached this um, helpful idea of a sticky mat when crafting. And I do find a lot of them are great and I've demonstrated them in videos. Just because I'm finding this new one and really liking it and recommending it doesn't mean that I think the other ones aren't good. It just means that there's another option out there. It's kind of like cars. You know, I have a minivan. I'm a minivan driver because I'm always hauling kids around. And when a new minivan comes out and it has a new feature, I'm really excited about it, right? I was so excited when I got my minivan with the built-in shop vac in the back. I thought that was so cool. Turns out I've never used it. But car companies are always trying to come out with new things. It doesn't mean that the car that you have doesn't run and doesn't work. It just means that there are new options out there and some people might be interested in them. Same thing with craft tools. Also, Crafting companies are small businesses that are really trying to 
stay in the industry, right? And so they're always working really hard to come up with new products. Sometimes it means kind of scouring different industries and finding tools in different industries that would work well in our industry. I appreciate that they do this because I don't take time to look at the makeup industries and so on to find things that would work for crafting. I appreciate that they take the time to find them and test them and bring them to market. So I'm a big fan when small businesses come out with new to me tools. I have seen comments where people get frustrated by this, that people get frustrated by new tools being available, like um, the new better press or a new foiling machine. People are like, it's another thing that I have to get. Here's the thing, you don't have to get it. If you're not interested, don't get it. It's kind of like when you're standing in the grocery store looking at mac and cheese boxes, right? There is the original mac and cheese. When you go, there are always new types of mac and cheese, different shaped noodles, different types of cheese, different whatever. If you see one and you think, "Uh, that's not for me, what do you do? You just buy what you normally buy or use what you already have at home or you just walk on. And I think that's kind of what's happening here. It can be overwhelming and frustrating when there's a lot of new products coming out. However, these are ways that the small businesses are trying to help us create better and also to keep their business going. So kudos to them for coming out with new things. For example, Waffle Flour with this, they put so much time and thought into these grip mats and the different carrier sheets that come with it and the different sizes that are available so that there's something for everyone. And I really appreciate that. Does she really expect you to buy all of them and need all of them? By no means. There's just different options for different people. And I think that's great. Nina from Waffle Flower is really smart. She's a smart cookie, and she puts a lot of thought into these. You can tell that by the different charts she puts together, the different options there are, the different um, techniques they demonstrate on their website. So I encourage you to look at new products that companies come out as a good thing. It means that they're continuing to think of ways to inspire us. It doesn't mean that you have to get them all. By no means do you have to get them all. I have demonstrated many different kind of sticky mats in the past. You you don't need them all. Just look at what each one has to offer and decide what's best for you. I will continue to demonstrate with the different options out there so that you can become more familiar with each of them. Okay, so I finished this set of postage stamps. I'll come back and turn it into a card a little bit later, but let's do some more stenciling so I can show you some more examples. This time I'm using the same grip mat, but instead I have that grid stuck to the back. So this is how it is in my Misty stamping tool as I showed you earlier. I'm gonna keep that grid mat stuck to the back and lay it onto my glass work surface. The grip mat still is exposed on the back on the right side and the bottom, which I demonstrated before, and it's enough to hold it in place. I just wanted to show you that you can keep that slightly smaller grid mat on the back of the grip mat if you wanted to, and it'll still stick to your work surface. So over this white die cut, I'm placing the first of the two stencils in the Postage Collage Coloring Layering Stencil Set. Now I did some masking, just like I did in the last example, to color these different areas in different colors of ink. One thing I wanted to mention is the best way to create a smooth, solid area is to use a large blending brush, such as the Altenew Large Ink Blending Tool. You can see I'm using it here. By the way, this is back in stock. It had been out of stock for a while, but it really is the best way to quickly create a solid, smooth, or large blended area. And you can use that larger tool with these masking sheets that come with this grip mat. All right, so after I did the colors with all of these, I have the second stencil in place, and this time I'm using the Altenew New Cloud White Pigment Ink. There are a lot of great white pigment inks out there. I'm really liking this new Cloud White because I find it goes on very smooth, and you can see it's very opaque. I'm using a large blending brush to apply it over this stencil, and it'll soften those colors in these areas. 
And by the way, this is a brush that I only use with white pigment ink. That ink will stay on the bristles and I wanna make sure it doesn't get on any other ink pads. All right, so once I've covered this with the white pigment ink, I can easily remove that stencil and look at that beautiful white ink over the bold color. I love the look of this. You will want to heat set this to make sure it dries completely. By the way, I know everyone's wondering how do you clean these grip mats? Usually I just use a baby wipe or a wet cloth. If you have something stubborn on it, you can use Hero Art's Ultra Clean Stamp Cleaner. That works great. Or you can do a gentle dish soap and water under your sink. But really, I find a baby wipe is all I need. It may stain, but it'll still work great. And now remember, that grid sheet is still underneath that clear mat, and I can put it back in my Misty Stamping Tool, and it's ready for use later. Okay, we'll come back to that inked piece in a moment, but let's do another one and look at more ways that you can use these grip mats. Again, I just want to show you lots of options so you can decide what might work best for you. I thought I'd take this chance to show you that some of the different size grip mats that Waffle Flower has available are chosen based on the size of their stencil mats. So this is a Waffle Flower stencil mat. I've used it many times in videos. It's this white non-stick surface that's great for lining up your stencils. It's not sticky, it's just a great mat to ink on. I mentioned before there are many sizes of this new clear grip mat available, including this five and a half by eight and a half inch mat. This size was chosen because it fits nicely into this white stencil mat. However, I found the slightly wider six and a half by eight and a half that also fits in the Misty stamping tool fits well in this. So there are lots of size options out there, but I'm still leaning towards the six and a half by eight and a half inch version. So let's use this. Here is the six and a half by eight and a half clear grip mat with that grid mat stuck to the back of it. I'm gonna take that off and just lay this into the corner of my white mini stencil mat. Let's use the third postage collage layering stencil set. This is the everyday version. I have a die cut under there and lined up the first stencil on top of the grip mat, which is inside of my stencil mat. And I'm applying a green ink over that. And again, using those clear carrier sheets and grid mats to kind of mask off the different areas. So this shows you that these grip mats fit into these white stencil mats from Waffle Flower. But let's go ahead and demonstrate how you can use these grip mats that have a little stick to it on non-glass surfaces. If you have a non-glass work surface such as a uh, cutting mat or paper mat, what you can do is put your grip mat onto the clear carrier sheet and then put tape along the edges of the clear carrier sheet that comes with the grip mat and tape it to your work surface. That way the grip mat stays still. You can put your cardstock on it and the stencil and it won't move as you do your inking. You may notice I put my hand on the stencil still. That's out of habit. The grip mat does hold it enough that you don't need to put your hand there. It really holds it tightly. I do recommend wiping your stencil and carrier sheets clean as you do this technique so that you can make sure you don't spread the ink to other areas. Now here, I thought it'd be fun to use a pen to color in those little hearts. I'm using a white gel pen. Remember, you don't always have to use ink over a stencil. You can also use pens or markers. So all of these different ways show that you can use your stencils with the grip mat to hold them in place as you do inking. Now let's look at the different ways you can use sticky surfaces or these grip mats to hold your project in place as you do stamping. I'm gonna go back to this Christmas collage that we created earlier and add the black stamping. I think you'll be impressed how helpful this is. I have my original Misty stamping tool and I'm taking the pad out of it. I have my grip mat that is size six and a half by eight and a half. We're doing the same thing I showed before where we put it in upside down in the corner of my Misty stamping tool. You know the back side of the grip mat is a little bit wider than the front side. So I'm putting that right in the corner. Then I take one of the clear green grid mats that comes with the grip mat 
and I flip it over and line up the grid of the green with the pink grid that's showing on the inside of the MISTI stamping tool. I press it down, then I pull all of that out and flip it over and put it into the corner of my MISTI stamping tool. Now every bit of the surface here is has that little bit of stick to it and it sticks inside of the MISTI. This is how I plan to keep my grip mat with that grid mat on the back because I know it'll stay in my MISTI stamping tool and it'll also stick to my glass work surface when I want to do stenciling. All right, let's do some stamping. I'm going to take my inked piece here, the postage collage that we created, and place it right in the center of that grip mat. I also have the coordinating die for the sentiment I plan to add on top, just so I can tape it in place on top of that collage as kind of a holding place, so I know that my stamping goes around it. Now this is the key. I'm going to take the clear heavyweight carrier sheet that comes with the grip mat and I'm just laying it over my MISTI. So I'm laying it over this area here in the center and it's, it's kind of hanging off over the pink area on the edges of the stamping tool. I'm now going to place on top of that clear carrier all the stamps that I want to position. The nice thing is that clear carriers holding those tiny little stamps in place until I'm happy with the arrangement, then I can close the door on my stamping tool to grab those stamps. I'm going to leave that clear carrier in place and ink up my stamps and stamp onto that clear piece so I can test it out and make sure I'm happy with where all of these stamps will stamp. If I'm happy with it, I can remove that clear carrier sheet, ink up my stamps, and stamp them directly onto my inked panel. It's nice to be able to have that clear carrier sheet there to hold those tiny stamps in place until I'm ready, and also to test out my stamping before I stamp it onto my inked panel. I then can remove that clear carrier sheet and do the stamping directly onto the panel. So this is really helpful because that grip mat is holding my panel right in place inside of the MISTI stamping tool and I can get the placement just right of my stamping. Now you could definitely do this with other grip mats that are on the market. Just use something clear to put over it that helps to get the positioning just right of each of your stamps. It also allows you to do test stamping and gives great results every time. Another reason to have a sticky mat or grip mat that fits into your stamping tool is that it allows you to use your scraps for sentiments and small stamped images. So here I have a scrap of black cardstock and I'm putting it onto my grip mat inside of my MISTI stamping tool. You can even use the magnet to make sure it stays put. I'm stamping a sentiment onto it with Versamark ink and then adding white embossing powder and heat setting it. So I was able to just have that piece of cardstock kind of floating in the center of my stamping tool and I don't have to worry about making sure it fits in the corner and stays put. Now I will say the stick on the grip mat isn't as strong as other sticky mats out there that have adhesive on them. So if you really want a small die cut to stay put, other mats might be better. But I think the versatility of this particular grip mat is something that I really like and I think will stay in my MISTI stamping tool. I think I'm going to switch to this mat instead of having that mouse pad that I usually have in my MISTI. Yes, I tend to overthink these tools, but I feel like that's my job to show you the different ways to use them and I'll continue to demonstrate them in future videos. Here's another way having a clear grip mat in your stamping tool is helpful. I wanted to stamp one of these sentiments on the inside of my card. So I have my clear grip mat with the green grid mat behind it inside of my stamping tool. Now remember there is a line there for horizontal A2 card. And you can see that little uh, like plus sign in the center of the grid mat. I'm just going to place my sentiment right over that plus sign, but up a little bit. That way I know it'll be centered inside of my card. Once I have that placed, I'll close the door on my stamping tool and grab that stamp. And then I will lay my open card into those lines on the grid mat for an A2 card. 
I'll press it on to that grip mat, go ahead and stamp the greeting, and now I know that it'll be straight and centered inside of my card. So it's really helpful to have that clear sticky mat inside of my stamping tool with the grid mat behind it. I'll show many techniques for this in the future. So here is this finished card. I added it to that four and a quarter by five and a half inch craft note card. I did also add a black gemstone for the reindeer's eye, a red glitter gemstone for the nose, and some silver iridescent stars in the sky in the bottom right corner and at the top of our tree. So this just shows you how I was able to get great stencil alignment and stamp positioning using a sticky mat, such as the Waffle Flower Grip Mat. Okay, let's finish off this second card, and while doing so, I'll demonstrate a couple other ideas for using a grip mat or sticky mat. This time I'm cutting apart my postage stamp collage. So I'm cutting right down the center of those little dots, creating these individual postage stamps. I also have my grip mat inside of my Misty stamping tool. Behind it, I'm placing a piece of white cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm gonna place it behind there, lining it up with those thick green lines for an A2 panel. So it's just behind there, behind my grip mat. Now I can take all my little individual postage stamps and arrange them onto that grip mat. And the grip mat will hold them in place as I arrange them and figure out how I'm gonna to want to attach them to my cards. So this clear grip mat is really helpful for this, planning things out because I can put my card behind it. So I kind of have, um, I guess, the guidelines for where I want to position my pieces. I then can take a picture with my phone and save that so I know how to arrange them. I'll remove some of the postage stamps and then put one of the clear carrier sheets over everything and place my stamps on top of that clear sheet. The clear sheet will kind of hold those small stamps in place and allow me to move them around until I'm happy. Then I'll close the door on my stamping tool, grab the stamps, remove that clear sheet and I can stamp onto those individual postage stamps that I've created. So again, it's all about just helping to get the positioning just right. Not everyone needs this or wants this, but it definitely is helpful to me. And remember, you could always practice stamping on the clear sheet before you remove it. So let's do this again. I'll remove those stamps and then I will place the clear carrier sheet on top of all of my stamp pieces there. Line up some more stamps on top of it. That clear carrier sheet will hold those little stamps in place. Then I'll close the door on my stamping tool to grab all those stamps. Once I have them on the door of the stamping tool, I'll remove my clear carrier sheet. I could practice stamping there if I wanted to, but I'm just going to go ahead and stamp directly onto the pieces with my black ink. So this is helpful to me. You could use other uh, sticky mats for this, but if you struggle with getting placement just right with your stamping, this can be helpful, even if you're using an acrylic block. Okay, let's finish this card off. For the background, I am using the Waffle Flower Quilted Zigzag Texture Die. I cut that from Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock, which is a light gray. Referring back to the photo I took, I'm gluing these different postage stamps onto that background using liquid adhesive so I can wiggle them till I get them in just the right spot. For a sentiment, I have a scrap of black cardstock that I'll place onto my grip mat, line up the stamp, and stamp it with Versamark ink. Keep in mind the grip mat isn't so sticky that it'll hold super tiny die cuts when you stamp on them, but you can always use a magnet to help secure it more if you need to. Overall, I didn't have problems. Now I'm adding a white embossing powder to the Versamark stamped image, heat setting it, and trimming it down. I'll add that sentiment to my card and it is complete. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I really like the overall design of this. This design was inspired by some examples over on the Waffle Flower website. They have a lot of great examples to go with their products. And I think it's a great card design that you can change up for different occasions. Let's do the third and final card. I have my postage collage that I've glued onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch gray note card. For a sentiment, I'm using the Waffle Flower Oversized Hugs die that includes the shadow and the word hugs itself. You can see off screen, I've cut a bunch of these dies from black and white cardstock, so they're ready to go. 
So I'll do the shadow from white and the word hugs from black and glue it right in the center. I'm placing that onto my grip mat in my Misty stamping tool and then putting a clear carrier sheet on top of that. I have the Waffle Flower Star Snowflake Sentiment set. I'm cutting the word uh, sending off of the greeting sending holiday hugs. I'll place the sending uh, sentiment on top of that clear carrier sheet, close the door on my stamping tool, ink it up with black ink, stamp it onto the clear carrier sheet to make sure I like the placement. If I like it, I'll remove the carrier sheet and then stamp it onto the card that was below. That way I can be sure I'm happy with where I'm stamping it because the card's all put together. I don't want to mess it up at this point. So that's another benefit of having a sticky or grip mat in your stamping tool. I added a glitter heart onto the hugs and that's it for this card. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I love that white pigment ink on top of the bold color behind it. And really this card didn't take long to pull together thanks to having tools that make stenciling and stamping easier. Now, before we go, I wanted to do a little summary about these grip mats. There are lots of sizes available. I will have a chart over on my blog, which I'll have a link to below, if you want to see what the different sizes are best for, for different uses. But what I found at the end of the day is the size that I like the most is the six and a half by eight and a half. Not only does it fit into my stamping tool, but it also is a workable size without a stamping tool. If you are looking for something slightly smaller that's still great to use and that fits in the mini Misty Stamping Tool, my second recommendation would be the four and three quarter by six inch grip mat. Now, earlier in the video, I showed you that there are these grip mat guidelines that come separately. There are the three guides that I'm pulling out of the package here that help you with getting placement just right in different ways. I do think that these might be helpful with a grip mat, and I'm gonna play more of with them off screen. I just wanted to mention these, you could also put behind your grip mat in your stamping tool if you wanted to. So I'll keep playing with them and share some ideas for them in future videos. All right, there you have it. Another new tool that I do think is a great one to have, some sort of sticky mat is really helpful in your crafty toolbox. If you are interested in the supplies I use today, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. But remember, use the supplies you have. Only look at these products if it's something that you really think will be helpful for you in crafting. At the end, I'll also link to some other related videos that might be helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.